What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be discussing three common mistakes beginners make in Python. Now I am very excited to be presenting this video because these are some mistakes I've made and these mistakes have cost me countless hours of debugging and headaches. So hopefully you guys will find this video helpful. Alright, let's just get right into it. Using keywords or modules as variable names. Now this is a big no-no and this is something I used to repeatedly do. The thing is a lot of Python keywords um, are so simple and they make good variable names. I think that's why they're used as Python keywords. So something like sum is something I would use to represent the sum of numbers. But in this case, it's a Python keyword. So using that as your own variable name is a big no-no. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is run this. So this basically just takes nums and returns the sum of nums. Now, if I run this second cell, which is just my list, then we create a variable name called sum, which is the big no-no, and it's going to save the output from adding stuff my list. So let me just run this. All right, so right now it seems innocuous, but uh, you'll see later on that's going to result in a very nasty bug. So here we name that variable sum, which is a big no-no because it's a Python keyword. If we run sum, it should show us that there's no problem. We have sum, which is now an integer, which holds the value six. So now here's where the, the headache will come. So we have another list now, my list two, and we want to run adding stuff again on my list two, but this time we're going to save it, save it in sum two. So I run this. And now we get something called int object is not callable. Now this is very hard to debug. Like what do they mean int object is not callable? Now if you go back, you'll see that we have overwritten the Python keyword sum with sum. So now sum is actually an integer and you cannot call an integer because it's not a function. Int object is not callable is essentially saying that you can't call an integer because it's not a function. So this is where the big mistake was that we named our variable as the same thing as a Python keyword. So now if I just change this to sum, uh, this to sum, okay, I guess it's saved into, it built, I would have to probably restart and clear output. Let's see, run this, run this, run that. Okay, no problem. I'll right, run this, run that, no problem. So once again, just be careful with this uh, naming of your variables. Now this is a uh, 1A, we're going, to, we're going to go to 1B, which is another very important thing. You also have to be careful of naming your module, AKA script, as a built-in or installed package. So what I mean by built-in or installed packages, you have beautiful soup, requests, TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, uh, NumPy, Pandas, etc. Those are your built-in packages. And now you don't want to name your module or script the same thing as one of those, and it's going to lead to errors. So let me show you that. My desktop is a mess, so uh, just please ignore that. I've set up some examples for you, so it just could be quicker. All right, so we create a script, TensorFlow, and this is just a dummy script I've created. Uh, print, this is a script, and I named it after a Python package, which is a big no-no. All right, now we have another script, main, and this main script, let's just pretend it's our main script. We're going to import TensorFlow as tf. Actually, this needs to be fixed. Call this tensor. Tensor equals tf.constant3. All right, so we're just going to run a simple uh, tf function. So I'll run this. Attribute module TensorFlow has no attribute constant. Now this is actually not true, but what's happening is we're actually importing the wrong TensorFlow. So you see this? This is a script. It's importing this TensorFlow instead of the built-in package. This TensorFlow here instead of the built-in TensorFlow package. So that's something you have to be very careful of. So now we can fix this by renaming TensorFlow to uh, TensorFlow stuff all right now let's just rain uh, run main again all right so moon blah, blah blah and as you can see it works tensor so, all right so that was the second mis uh, the one B mistake that most beginners make all right so naming your module or script as a built the built-in install package so Okay, so the next common mistake that most Python beginners make is using an empty list as a default argument. Now this is a very, very nasty, insidious bug. This is a function, create numbers list, which takes a numbers range and it will create a list from that numbers range. So we have two arguments, a numbers range and an empty list. So here's the big no-no, the big mistake we're making. We're, we're assigning an empty list to numbers. So this is the big mistake here because we don't want to assign an empty list as a default argument to a function. For our i in range, numbers range, we're going to print i. So actually we don't even need this print. All we're doing is we're appending 
the number from the uh, numbers range. Okay, so this is a simple enough function. I will run this. Okay, so we're going to put in the value three into numbers range, and we're going to need, leave this as the default argument. So we run x again. Okay, so we get back zero, one, two. So essentially, it takes a number, say something like three, and it'll, it'll uh, print back the range. Here's where the bug comes in. Now we're going to create another function. So y equals create numbers list three. So actually, let me change it to five. All right, so we're going to do five equals create numbers list. We'll run this. Since we're actually assigning create numbers list five to a new variable um, separately from create numbers list, which was assigned to x, we would assume that we would get back the value zero, one, two, three, four. But um, if you print out five, you'll see that it actually combines the value of x and adds on the new value to that. So this list is continuously growing. And it's a very strange bug. I don't really know what's going on behind the scenes to thoroughly explain it, but it's just something you have to be careful. So um, usually what you can do in this situation is instead of having this numbers equals um, empty list, have it as num if numbers equal equals none, uh, numbers equals list. So you create the empty list within the function itself. So fix up all the problems. So let's just run this, x, x. Now we're going to create y, y, y. And as you can see, it um, fixed or it solved that bug or prevented us from having that bug. So usually what you could do is uh, just set numbers equals to none. So in this case, we're setting it to none. And if it's none, uh, we do this, or you can always add an else statement, else numbers equals numbers or numbers. So whatever, if it's already a list. All right. So all right, so that's bug number two. Now we're going to go into, all right, so number three, forgetting to use string.lower or string.strip when making Boolean string checks. Let me say that one more time. Forgetting to use string.lower, string.strip when making Boolean string checks. So say you receive data or even an input. So from a user, you receive an input. Sometimes the data itself will be mixed in terms of capitalization. So some of the words or text will be capitalized. For example, in this case, apple is lowercase, banana is capitalized, carrot is capitalized, and eggplant is lowercase. So sometimes you'll have sort of this mixture of um, uppercase and lowercase. And not only that, you'll also have data that has this space, uh, white space, either at the end or it could also be at the beginning as seen in front of banana and in front of carrot. So here is a clear example of data that's mixed up with uppercase, lowercase, white space at the end, white space at the beginning. This can be problematic if you are trying to use Boolean string checks because you have to be very careful that an apple, something like, um, does not equal apple. This is especially true with user inputs. Once again, user inputs Sometimes you'll have yes, but the user can input a capital yes or a, a lowercase yes. So you have to be careful of and think of all of these sort of possibilities. Just to show you a, a quick example, um, say you're looking for items that are fruits. So in your case, you know that apples and bananas are fruits. So you're applying a Boolean check as you iterate through this list to see if uh, this list contains those items, apple or banana. So in this case, you make a simple Boolean check with item equals banana, um, print fruit. If I item equals, uh, sorry, apple, print fruit, or else print nothing. So if I run this list, okay, you'll see that it prints nothing, 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 despite having apple and banana uh, within our list. This is once again because the apple has a space at the end and the banana has a white space at the front of it. And the banana is capitalized and here we're only making a boolean check with banana being lowercase. So what you can do is, of course you can use list comprehensions to sort of clean up the data. But sometimes if you are getting inputs from users, you have to be uh, very careful of these uh, boolean checks as well. So uh, one good habit to apply is always try to use lower and strip. Um, when making boolean checks. So for item in grocery list, if item.lower.strip equals apple, in this case, uh, you don't need this uh, lower, dot lower and strip because you could see the word itself. Here, as you're iterating through the list, you, you can't really see the words. But once again, it's a good habit to use lower.strip to avoid any mistakes. For me, I actually um, made a lot of mistakes. Um, the computer vision, deep learning stuff, a lot of my labels actually were um, mixed. So say I have label A, and label B and uh, sort of uh, you know C whatever. If I was trying to extract all the information from a single label, 
um, sometimes the boolean checks would fail. So I've actually ran into this problem uh, with not using lower that strip uh, multiple times and it's created uh, multiple debugging nightmares. So always um, sort of use lower and strip if you can, if you remember when making boolean checks. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, these are the three common mistakes uh, that most uh, Python beginners make and three or three common mistakes most Python beginners should try to avoid. So that's it for this video. Let me know how you guys felt about these three common mistakes. And if there's something I forgot, please let me know as well. I'm curious as to what you think are common mistakes beginners should avoid. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time.